Tova, I'm so happy to see you. There's a lot of excitement about you being back on Broadway in this role. Are you feeling that from people? I'm so grateful for it. I asked my director, do you think that I'll get entry applause? And then there was this atom bomb explosion on September 6th, Tuesday, <laughs> when of course they welcomed Leah. They welcomed me back to the stages that I have trod for 49 years, and in yeah. May it'll be 50 years. I believe this is your 10th Broadway show. It is my 10th Broadway You've show. You've also done so much off-Broadway and around the country and film and TV. Film and TV. But yeah. what does this mean to you, this moment and Everything. this role? Yeah. Everything. It's one of the privileges of being a senior citizen. You take nothing for granted, uh, not to be morbid, but once you bury both your parents and you realize that time in this body may not be eternal, that you appreciate every dawn. We, we live on Central Park West, mm -hmm. and we used to live on Riverside Drive where we saw every sunset. It ain't so bad to see every dawn when you're in the third act of your life. So we entered this process. Michael Mayer, our fabulous director, gave Leah and I the opportunity to recreate the roles, not to replace. Right. It's very, very important. Now, we couldn't wreak havoc on sound and lights. Uh, there were certain blocking obligations that wanted to be met, and there were a few adjustments made to that, but they were not uh, you know, wholesale. However, in terms of interior beats and interior life, we were given great freedom. In all events, it, it's, it's a fabulous gift, an unexpected explosion of a bountiful gift uh, for an artist to come to a show and feel so beloved mm. by an audience that's been with me for five decades. And uh, as I say to my daughter in act two, but a person wants to matter. And that's, that's how we feel on that stage, that this company and I as an artist and I as a mother and I in this case as the first actress of the Jewish religion to play Rosie Bryce mm. in 60 right. years. I'm bringing it home. I was born to play this role. You are a real theater person. I am. So you understand the importance of Funny Girl finally breathing life again on Broadway and giving opportunity to these amazing performers, including yourself. What does this show mean to you just as a theater fan to have it back on Broadway? Well, first of all, I was in eighth or ninth grade when Mr. Eric, the head of the chorus at Scarsdale High, said, you have to see this show, children. I've just seen an extraordinary performer in a piece wow. called Funny Girl, and I went to see it, and I saw Barbara Streisand. You saw Streisand? Wow. I, at yeah. the Winter Garden. Iconic. I saw Streisand, and I remember Sidney Chaplin. I remember uh -huh. the role was not developed. All we saw all we really saw was Barbara Streisand. And probably if they had a brain in their head, they cast her, fell mad for her, and kept writing for her. I think it is the greatest role written for a woman in the American musical theater, even greater than Mama Rose. It's not that Mama Rose isn't brilliant, but she shares it with Gypsy. Right. There's no share here. Correct, right. There's one, one center of the wheel, and that's Fanny Bryce. And if you fulfill the requirements of Fanny Bryce with the looming legend of Streisand, mm -hmm. you're gonna hit a Grand Slam home run. And that is what Leah Michelle does, and that's what Julie Banco does on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. And God bless Harvey Firestein for revisiting the script and giving Nikki Arnstein a very clear arc. Yeah. Uh, and Ramin is quite brilliant in it, and all of a sudden, Nikki Arnstein is salient. You, you see him, you see the passionate, ill-advised, marvelous, unexpected love between Fanny and, uh, and Nikki, and it's very, very exciting. He sends it out, and Leah understands how to receive it and send it back. And after all, Ramin has been valued. He's been with three, maybe four Fanny Bryces within six months. I mean, this guy, I salute him because he's a, he's a real pro. He does not only does his job, but he alters according to who's on mm -hmm. the stage with him. You know, we all have to be like water, not like steel. I love that, you have to be like water. I've never heard that before. The biggest thing when I teach is that you don't have to get on a musical stage and go, the character does not know she or he is in a musical, mm. only the actor. So when the character can no longer speak, when they're overwhelmed, Curly comes out and the sun is rising in Oklahoma and he sees the wheat and he goes, oh, 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 what a beautiful morning. It comes from the experience. Mm. So likewise, that's what I tried to do in this role as quickly and as deeply as possible, and I'm still excavating the role. 
I have two music stands with two scripts and two corks. I put a cork in my mouth so that my consonants are clear since they are the carriers of ideas, vowels, the carriers of emotion. And I work on that part. I work on that part till I'm effortless. So I'm still on the journey.